Hello, I'm Dr. Fryer, and uh, I'm the designer and manufacturer of the LXH model that you just purchased, and I want to thank you for your purchase. This video is put together for two purposes. One, to show you all the highlights of this LXH model and all the detail that has gone into it, so it'll help you clinically in those settings. Um, and two, I'd like to demonstrate some of the clinical aspects of this model and how it can help you in the pursuit to find solutions. So first of all what I'd like you to do is get your model and uh, follow me and I'm going to demonstrate a few things with the model so you can understand all its functions. This model was uh, created first of all uh, from a natural specimen. A full spine natural human was was purchased and this particular spine was chosen because of its minimal osteophytosis. Uh, with the degenerative uh, model, uh, with osteophytes and, and uh, discite loss, uh, movement would have been difficult to demonstrate. So uh, a specimen with minimal uh, degenerative properties from a bony standpoint was chosen. So uh, intervertebral motion can be demonstrated with this two-part disc which is basically the highlight of this model. Um, so, uh, first of all, what, what I decided to do was to create L5. Uh, well, first of all, L4-5. This is an L4-5 model. And uh, much of the literature thinks that this is the most common degenerative spot in the human spine. And uh, you may agree. L5-1, uh, some arguments there. But anyways, L4-5 was chosen here. And I consider this the SUV of, of models because it can demonstrate many, many things. The degenerative model is coming next, um, and also the cervical model. But first of all, I want to demonstrate to you the details that's gone into this one here. So, the L5 was was colored, well I chose white to represent a bony white. Uh, to give it sort of a natural, uh, clean look. And the sets were uh, painted with, with uh, a bluish pearl, white pearl color, which is what uh, it resembles in nature, and uh, a finish over top to protect it. Um, and L4, um, I designed L4 because I thought, well, with a disc that needs to be viewed uh, more specifically, uh, we better create an L4 vertebrae that we can actually see down into into the disc. So, uh, by looking at the the uh, looking through the top of L4, first of all, a lens was created uh, so we could see down. You can see that there are vessels in L4, and some of the anatomical detail are actually demonstrated here with this natural specimen. You can see the uh, posterior vertebral basal or vein uh, foramen on the posterior aspect of L4, Hans venous clefts that are typically seen uh, in MRI. You can see some of the vascular entrances uh, on the anterior aspect and you can also see that we have a copyright symbol on the front as well. Um, so looking down through the superior aspect of L4 you can see that there's an annular tear posterior lateral annular tear. And I've created a zigzag formation because that's what the literature shows. It kind of cracks through the annulus through this, well in the lumbar spine we have 25, they say about 25 lamella uh, encircling the nucleus and it kind of breaks its way through um, hydraulically fractures and it fi finds its way through the cracks. So anyways that's why the zigzag pattern there. Um, and you can see how, it, how I've created a uh, the same sort of annular tear on the posterior aspect where it, where it migrates out in hernias. And we'll get to that in a moment here. But looking down, you can see that we have a nucleus, which is clear. And we also have the annulus, which is the proper ratio. Uh, you can see down further, and that's the, the blue that you see down at the top of L5 is what you're looking at, um, is the hyaline cartilage, the end plate. And also you can see the black specks in there. Uh, those are to simulate uh, the 
the end plate pores at a higher concentration at the nuclear interface. You can also see there's a red uh, fracture line in there, and that's to demonstrate end plate fractures if you ever come across that. Not too common, although the literature says that's more common than we actually think, according to McGill's work. Um, so that's basically all the features when you're looking down through this aspect, but the, the, the main highlight of this model is with the two-part disc. And if you take the model and uh, you can squeeze it, if you squeeze it in compression, so compression first and then flexion, you'll see there is a migration of the nucleus. Under neutral loading, if you just create neutral loading with the facets imbricating more, you see that there isn't the posterior loading or the posterior migration of the nucleus. So flexion loading creates herniation while neutral loading doesn't or it's minimal. There's, there's some disc bulging that represents and this is what's exciting is that when I made this it started to make sense with respect to matching up with the literature because flexion loading we know causes problems posterior laterally. If you look at the outside of the, the disc, you can see the 60 and 30 degree angular fibers that I've shown there, and you can feel that, you can palpate that. But the highlight, of course, what everybody likes, is the, uh, is the tear on the posterior lateral aspect. And under compressive, remember to do compression first, because it's kind of like squeezing a ketchup bottle, you want to squeeze that stuff out. Compression and then flexion, it'll translate out. Um, and if you have a nerve, you can place the nerve there, and uh, it's pretty obvious that you're going to get some ridiculous symptoms with that. Um, a couple tips. This nuclear material resembles the real thing, so it's sticky and has the consistency of heavy phlegm. And others think it has the consistency of crab meat. So and I think it all depends on how degenerated or how, how uh, dehydrated that nucleus is. This is a relatively hydrated nucleus, uh, which will give you more, um, better dynamic movement with the model. With that nucleus being sticky, you want to be mindful that I put in the information uh, slip that you got with your model. You don't want to touch it, uh, because if you touch it, well, you can touch it, it's okay, but if you touch it on a regular basis, You've got dirt on your fingers or dirt on, you know, even dirt on the L4 nerve root here. It will, in time, if you touch it repetitively over and over and over, what it'll do is it'll start to tease apart a little bit. It'll create like a stringy, kind of a, uh, sort of, it'll string off. And some people really like it because it demonstrates adhesions. And it's no big deal. Adhesions uh, are something that actually clinically do occur. Um, but if you want the model to last a really long time, what I would encourage you to do is try not to allow that nucleus to touch anything. Um, if it does touch things and you find it starts to kind of string off, it's okay. All you do is you just take a little cloth and you just carefully wipe the excess off and you'll be fine. There's lots of nuclear material and it won't dry out. It does, that material just doesn't do that. Um, but I would create compression and Migra herniation of about five to seven millimeters maximum and then allow it to go back in and it'll stay protected and it'll give you years of service that way. Right. I'd like to thank you for your purchase and if you have any questions you can email me. Uh, my website is Dynamic Disc Designs. Uh, be sure to watch the video there and uh, yeah I'd love to hear any feedback from you so enjoy.